Hello, I'm going to pray. I've got a word that I believe, not believe, I know um, God is placed in my heart and I have to obey and share. So Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I just receive a fresh anointing upon myself right now to share your word, your word that you've placed on my heart to be a blessing to your people. I thank you, Holy Spirit, have your way in and through me. You are the teacher. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So welcome. Um, I just have a quick word that the Lord has placed on my heart, and that's concerning the devil, uh, the enemy. He, over in John 10 and 10, the word of God is clear. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. So we have an enemy that's so real. God is real and the devil is real. And you can believe that or not. But for those who believe, um, this message is really for born again believers and this message is a quick message but i believe it's going to minister uh, to the hearts of those that it's supposed to reach uh, this message here is a warning if you are a born again believer but yet you are playing back and forth in the church back and forth in your relationship with God. Um, God does not come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. God does not take lives of his children. That's the devil, and that's the work of the devil, and we need to know the difference. So God is reminding us in his word that there is a thief that's going to, one, try to kill you, try to destroy you, steal from you, and rob you, and specifically of your life. And, you know, this could be very well speaking of your spiritual life, where you can experience heaven right here on this earth, where you can experience the blessing of God and the presence of God. But I'm talking right now today about natural life being taken too many people are leaving up out this world off this earth to the covid virus but doors are being open and that's not in every case don't get me wrong but doors are being opened by some that are born again believers they have professed jesus christ as their lord and their savior but they are playing the field they are not um, giving their lives completely and totally to God. They're not serving God. They're coming, you know, in and out of church, in and out of their relationship with God. Um, and God loves them. God loves us. He loves us so very much. But it's important for us to keep our relationship with him um, connected. You know, we need to stay in fellowship and in relationship with God. And when the door is open through sin, when we're playing the field, when we're constantly backsliding, you know, when we're not repenting, uh, if we make a mistake, you can open up that door to the enemy to rob you of your life. So um, this message, once again, is for those who have gotten lukewarm in the church and you're not taking things seriously, spe specifically, you're not taking God serious. I mean, with everything that has taken place on this earth in the last two years, why would a person not take God serious? And I know, you know, it has to do sometimes with the soul. Sometimes these soul ties, we get into, you know, relationships that become bondage and we turn people into, you know, our gods. We turn jobs into our gods. We turn all kinds of things into a God. And that takes us from 
worshiping, worshiping and serving God and being in that beautiful bond and fellowship and relationship that we should have with God. Um, so, you know, this message once again is for, you know, born again believers that you keep repenting for the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. But deep down in your heart, you know you're going to go back and do the same things over and over and over again. God is calling for you to change your heart, to repent to him sincerely. And it's because he loves you. This is not a message of judging. This is a message of love. God loves you so much and he wants you to give his heart completely to him so that he can keep you protected so that his blood the blood of Jesus can cover you and keep you protected and this COVID and any other sickness or what have you and just crazy accidents you know in cars and all of that none of that stuff will come near you truly the Psalm 91 will cover you it won't just be a saying to you it'll be a reality it'll be something that you are experiencing every day but you got to take God serious you can't keep playing the field the word of God says um, in 1st John 2 15 through 17 it says do not love the world or the things in this world if anyone loves the world the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. The world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And then in James 4, 1 through 4, the word of God says, this is James chapter 4, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? It says you lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it, spend it on your own pleasures. This is the verse right here, verse four. It says, adulteries, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I mean, that's powerful right there. If you're a friend with the world, you know, and you just want to do the things of the world and you don't want to take God serious and, you know, this new life that he has placed before you, uh, man, it says it right there that you become an enemy of God. But once again, God is not killing anybody. He does not kill. He's not an evil God. He cannot be tempted. God is a good God and he's a faithful God. But there is a perpetrator. There is an imposter there is the enemy the devil satan you know the deceiver and the moment we come out of fellowship you know we got saved we got relationship with god but the moment we come out of fellowship with god those doors can be open and you do not want to be deceived uh you know you want to know that you don't have any doors open for the enemy to come in and rob you of your life and I'm talking about spiritually and naturally. And just one final verse is really, really powerful. Um, so I'll read that verse when I wrap up at the end of this video, which is just a moment because I just had to take time out. I, I just came from worship and two awesome services and receiving the word of God. And the word that I received today, I'm going to take that word. I'm going to apply that word. I'm taking God serious. You know, I love this life. I love my life. I love other people. I love, you know, how God changes our hearts and changes our lives. But it's so up to us. He leaves it up to us to take him serious and to do his word. Obedience is the key. 
I don't want to want you to be in fear. I just want you to repent. If you need to repent, that's what this message is all about. If you need to repent right now today, if you've been out there just tripping and you know you've been tripping, you know, you know that, you know, you you're born again, so you you get convicted. You know that you have not been right in your heart toward God. You know you've given your heart to something else or to someone else just repent today you know and get things right with god you know you can simply repeat after me just say father in the precious name of jesus forgive me for any and every way that i have uh, drawn from the faith that you've given me i repent in jesus name and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you help me and that you make me strong right now, wherever I may be weak, that I will give God the glory with my life all the rest of my days, my long days, my long life here on this earth. I thank you, Father, for forgiveness, and I forgive myself. I repent, and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, I have right standing and right fellowship with God right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And so just this final verse, I rejoice with you um, because it most definitely takes a heart change and it takes humility uh, to really follow God, to serve God, to want to know God more, to want to experience his presence even more. It takes humility. Uh, pride and rebellion is what keeps people in trouble and once again, cause them to you know, not be in relationship with God and worst of the worst cause them not to be here on this earth any longer to experience the blessing and the presence of God and the peace of God and the love of God. So this final scripture, it's in Revelations 3 and verse starting at verse 14. Um, we, it was speaking to the church of the Leodosians. The word of God says, these things says, amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me, this is the Lord speaking, gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, praise God, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. So, it is God's heart's desire that not one perish but that all come to him and know him and experience him and recognize who he is and experience the latter part of John 10 and 10. Jesus came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. This is a message of love. God loves you so very much. Take his word serious, apply his word, obey his word, and you will experience the protection that's in Psalm 91. You'll experience the protection 
of having on the full armor of God in Ephesians 6, you'll experience that long life and length of days. It hurts God. It hurts God's heart when his children leave up out of here prematurely. I decree and declare that you will not leave this earth prematurely, but you have long life and length of days and peace is added to you because your heart is right before God and you have repented and you're going to walk in that true change. God bless you. I love you. And thanks for the opportunity to speak this love into your heart from God. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.